picking out all the hardware pieces for your new gaming PC is a feeling matched only by the thrill of assembling these pieces into a fully functioning whole. Unfortunately, not all hardware components are compatible with one another, so checking to make sure whether all of your preferred components can actually be used together is paramount. There's nothing worse than dishing out several hundreds of dollars for a new PC only to find out that some parts can't physically fit or that the PC simply won't boot up. Luckily for you, we've made this video. So if you'd like to save yourself some unnecessary stress and frustration, to say nothing of wasted money, stick around as we cover everything you need to know about PC hardware compatibility component by component. As always, we'll kick things off with the CPU. Your CPU of choice will dictate what kind of motherboard you have to get. Obviously, if you get an AMD CPU, you'll have to get an AMD motherboard, and the same goes for Intel. But not just any AMD or Intel motherboard will do. You have to look at the socket. The socket is a slot on the motherboard that the CPU uses to interface with and communicate with the rest of the system. And needless to say, sockets come in many shapes and sizes and with many different pin configurations. So you can't simply just slot in a CPU into a motherboard with an incompatible socket. As such, the socket is easily the most important spec when it comes to overall PC compatibility. If it doesn't fit, nothing else will work either. At the moment, AMD uses the AM4 socket for their mainstream CPUs, including all Ryzen CPUs, and the TR4 socket for the more powerful Threadripper models. Unfortunately, the Intel side of things is not that simple. Most mainstream Intel CPUs use the LGA1151 socket, and the more powerful ones use the LGA2066 socket. So far, so good. But the thing about the LGA1151 socket is that it received some revisions over the years. So now we have two versions of this socket, Rev.1 and Rev.2. The revised version went and rearranged some of the pins along the way, making the socket incompatible with 6th and 7th gen models. This means that all 6th gen Intel Core CPUs and onward use the LGA1151 socket, but that they aren't all compatible with the same CPUs. They could have gone and renamed the Rev.2 into something else entirely, but instead they decided to make things unnecessarily complicated and confusing for the average consumer. Which is why we advise everyone looking to build an Intel gaming PC to triple check the socket compatibility. Seriously, triple check it. Thankfully, the chipset can be used as a simple indicator to differentiate between the Rev.1 and Rev.2 motherboards. Coffee Lake CPUs, which is to say 8th gen and 9th gen CPUs, all use the 300 series chipset. So any motherboard with a 300 series chipset, like the H370 or the Z370, is guaranteed to have the revised version of the socket. So one last time, LGA1151 Rev.1 is compatible with 6th and 7th gen CPUs, while the Rev.2 is compatible with 8th and 9th gen CPUs. And speaking of the chipset, just how important is this spec for compatibility? Well, so long as the socket fits, the CPU will work regardless of the chipset. But the chipset does determine how many connectors you'll have and whether you'll have access to certain features like overclocking, dual GPU support, AMD Store MI, Intel Optane technologies, and so forth. If you want to see the specs for all the Intel and AMD chipsets, check out the links in the description. Going through all of them in this video would take forever, and there are more important things to discuss. For example, the GPU compatibility. Unless you're making a budget gaming PC running off of one of the excellent Ryzen APUs, the GPU is easily the most important piece of hardware you'll get. And luckily for all of us, it's a fairly straightforward hardware piece as far as compatibility is concerned. All you need is a motherboard with the PCI Express 3.0 interface. GPUs have been using the PCI Express as a means of interfacing with the motherboards for a while now, so this is something that your motherboard is guaranteed to have if it's compatible with a relatively new CPU. Now what's interesting is that the first motherboards with the new and improved PCI Express 4.0 interface have been released last year, but as of yet, there are still no GPUs that require this newer interface. What's more, they can't even make any use of it. 
So if you're looking to buy a motherboard with the new PCI Express 4.0 interface at the time of this video's release, just know that you'll be paying a premium price for a feature that your GPU won't be able to make any use of. It doesn't matter which current gen GPU you use, it could be a GTX 1650 or an RTX 2080 Ti, you will not get any extra performance out of it. So just keep that in mind. Aside from that, you need to make sure that the graphics card can physically fit inside the case. And if you're gunning for a dual GPU setup, you'll need a chipset that supports it. Just having two PCI Express 3.0 slots available isn't enough. The motherboard has to support either AMD Crossfire or Nvidia SLI for this to work. Next up, we have the RAM. And RAM is also one of the simpler components when it comes to compatibility. The most important thing to remember here is that DDR4 RAM is only compatible with DDR4 motherboards. No combination of DDR4 and DDR3 will work. So long as you're not using any data components, you shouldn't face any major issues with regards to RAM compatibility. As for avoiding any minor issues, you should check to see what the maximum supported RAM capacity and speed are for both the CPU and the motherboard. DDR4 speeds generally range between 2133 MHz and 3200 MHz, however, there are RAM kits out there that push this upper limit all the way up to 4866 MHz, although these aren't at all cost effective with regards to gaming. In any case, having fast RAM is nice, but there is no point in buying RAM so speedy that your CPU and motherboard can't keep up with. So make sure to check the maximum supported RAM speeds listed on the CPUs and the motherboard's manufacturer's website. As for capacity, this generally isn't an issue since most mainstream motherboards and CPUs support anywhere between 64 and 128 gigabytes. This is more than you'll ever need for gaming. Lastly, you may want to check whether the motherboard and the CPU support dual channel or quad channel RAM setups. Once again, you can find this info on the manufacturer's websites. As far as storage compatibility goes, there are basically only two connectors that you need to keep in mind. SATA 3 and M.2 SATA 3 ports are used by all HDDs and most NAND SSDs, and most motherboards have somewhere around six of them, so you're unlikely to ever run out. On the other hand, if you're looking to install the fastest storage available, you'll likely want an NVMe SSD. These SSDs look a lot like RAM sticks and they use the M.2 interface which lets you slot these sticks directly onto the motherboard. Nothing comes close to NVMe in terms of storage speed, but most motherboards only have one M.2 slot on them. So if you'd like to install multiple NVMe sticks, you'll need to take special care to buy the right motherboard. And then there's the power supply. This is another one of those specs that can render a PC completely unusable if you get it wrong. As far as the physical dimensions are concerned, the ATX PSU is the standard format at the moment, so you shouldn't have any issues with it unless you're also using a super compact case. And since most cases are designed with the standard ATX power supply in mind, you're bound to have all the connectors you need. So the only thing left is the wattage. Now we've made a whole separate video on this topic, so check out the link in the description if you'd like the more in-depth answer. But for now, you should know that the wattage of your power supply should not just meet the power requirements of all the hardware pieces combined, it should also exceed them by a significant amount. Power supplies are at their best when they operate between 50 and 80% of their maximum capacity. So if your collective hardware demands at least 300 watts to run, it wouldn't at all be an overkill to get a 450 watt power supply. On the contrary, this would actually be very desirable. Lastly, you need to make sure that the case you get can physically accommodate all of the components that are supposed to go inside of it. The four common case formats are the small form factor, mini tower, mid tower, and full tower. These form factors correspond to four motherboard sizes, mini ITX, 
micro ATX, ATX, and eATX respectively. However, there's a lot of variation in the actual size of each case, so we recommend you always check the actual measurements on the manufacturer's website. For example, some mini towers can accommodate a full-sized ATX motherboard, but this isn't something you should count on. Of course, larger cases can always be used with smaller motherboards. After you've got the motherboard figured out, you should also check whether or not the case will be able to fit two particular components, the graphics card and the CPU cooler. Graphics cards can get pretty beefy, so it's not all that uncommon for mini towers to be physically incompatible with some of the many massive triple fan graphics cards out there. And the same goes for CPU coolers. There are plenty of compact graphics cards and low-profile CPU coolers out there, but if you're gunning for one of the heftier ones, always double-check to make sure you'll be able to fit them inside the case. Now, we understand that all of this info may have sounded confusing or overwhelming for many first-time builders. It can even be discouraging and make you just want to get a pre-built PC and get it over with. Thankfully, there are many online tools that make picking out the right components for your PC a breeze. And the one we recommend the most is PC Part Picker. This site will automatically narrow down your selection of hardware to only include the compatible parts. So for example, if you've picked the Ryzen 5 3600 as your CPU, the site would only show you AM4 motherboards that are compatible with the CPU. This in turn would make it so that only DDR4 RAM gets shown and so on. It's a useful tool that many experienced builders use to keep track of the overall price of their ideal PC, but you can imagine how useful the auto compatibility feature is for novices. What's more, it'll let you know if there are any issues with the build. For example, if an older motherboard would require a BIOS update in order to work with a newer CPU. It even keeps track of the overall power requirement, making it easier to pick out the right power supply for the job. All in all, it's a wonderful site that we wholeheartedly recommend for all PC builders, novices and veterans alike. A new one gets uploaded. We're constantly working on new videos, so the next one should be right around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.